to introduce you into the Iron Church Qigong. I want to summary a little bit about the Tao system. Okay? <clears throat> the basic system of the Taoism, we have the microcosmic, we have the healing love, and we have the Qigong. All these three basic practices is utilize the circle, the, the circulation of the energy in a circle. In the microcosmic, we do, we try to circle the energy, draw the energy from the mid eyebrow down to the navel, and circle the energy down and up to the spine, up to the head, and down the front, and down to the tongue, and down to this way, in a circle. In the Iron Chi Qigong, we utilize the same microcosmic again. We use the same microcosmic. The Iron Chi Qigong is involved, one is the organ exercise. The, uh, the next one is involved with the structure. So this is involved with the structure and the energy spiraling. Uh, our body, if you look carefully about our body, our body like a tire. We have three layers, one layer, two layer, three layer, and each layer have a fascia. Each layer have a fascia layer there. Okay? And this fascia, it look, it like a plastic, it like plastic or elastic rubber. It's protecting us. You see the, the white thing between the muscle and the layer, it's called a fascia layer. And the layer can be blow up and can be expand or contract down. <coughs> can expand or contract down. Now, so these three layers work like this. I show you the three layers. So the, we have the first layer. We have a second layer, and we have a third layer. Between the layer, we have a diaphragm. It's also a fascia mixed with the muscle. And divide this one, and the organ is in here. So we have the organ inside here. We have the liver. We have the spleen. We have the kidney. We have the pancreas. And we have the heart here, and we have the lung here. It's all contained in the layer. Now, in olden time, they discovered that we have a chi pressure. So we call it chi pressure. Chi pressure. The chi pressure is make us maintain up in a shape. When you lose the chi, you don't have pressure. So when the people are so depressed, all the chi lose out, and they get into a structure of depressed. There, right? Look at the people you know they're depressed now. If the people walk like this, or sit like this, okay? They're depressed, there, right? If the people sit like this, or walk like this, okay? What? They are so angry. The anger energy shape them into an anger energy, into a very angry, you know? The same thing is in here. The energy is the one that shapes us. They said we have a 14.7 power per square inch, PSI, power per square inch. The air outside also 14.7 14 power per square inch, and the inside have to nearly build the same pressure, is that right? We have the same pressure inside. The inside also 14.7 pound per square inch. Okay? If the pressure is loosened, we get weak and sick. Simple. Because everything in the body moves or not is involved with the pressure. So we have to constantly breathe in the air to maintain a power pressure per square inch. When we exhale, you loosen and lessen a little bit power pressure. When you inhale, 
you're increasing more power pressure. If you can inhale longer, the power pressure increasing. If we can increase more power pressure, the chi is going to flow faster, the blood is <coughs> going to flow faster. Okay? Now, interesting is when a young people or healthy people, the chi pressure is a lot. When the people get sick, everything is go down. We got a power pressure from outside pressing in. Energy don't flow, blood don't flow, circulation don't move. So they discover that if you can increase a power pressure per square in, in the organs, you will <coughs> increase the efficiency of the organs. So we need to increase a power pressure per square in inside the organ first. And we're going to expand the power pressure per square in out into the, into the uh, cavity into the cavity, okay? And later on, we're going to expand it into a layer, fascia layer. Now, if you have an egg, if you throw an egg on the floor, what happens? Break. break. If you put an egg in a balloon, you throw it, it's still going to break. But if you put another bigger balloon in here, and you put another bigger balloon in here, now you can kick it, you can stab it, you can do anything with it. You're not going to break the egg. Right or not? Right? Because the air pressure protecting it. This is the same thing in the olden time. They discovered this thing in the, in the beginning is for uh, esoteric practice in order to get more energy. Later on, they discovered that they can protect themselves when the people punch or people hit them. They bounce it out. So they don't get hurt. But this nowadays, in olden time, they can practice extremely until the weapon or people cannot hit them. So they call Iron Church. Okay? And uh, the other day, we were teaching there, and uh, a lady said, they want iron skirt. Also, <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we say iron shirt and iron skirt. <laughs> so they protect this here, iron skirt. Okay? And, uh, and the, uh, now, <coughs> The very simple way is that we, you want to get a, a good energy flow, energy expanding, you must have a good structure. The good structure is the one that maintains the energy flow. So the Aichi Qigong is very, very emphasized in the good structure. And the Aichi Qigong is the standing or still position of the Tai Chi. The Tai in our Tai Chi that we teach. And the Tai Chi is the moving form of the Iron Church. So every, every structure, you have to be there. Every movement, you must have one structure, and you can transfer the force. Okay. So the navel is right in here. I hope you know it. And... Uh, the navel is the place where you will draw the energy from outside. We're going to draw the energy from outside right into the navel. And we're going to start the energy and flow. The navel like a battery that store the energy. And the mid-eyebrow is like a place you can draw the energy into it. And you can draw it down. Okay. And the navel also uh, work as the uh, collection energy. But collection energy. So now we're going to work on um, the navel is a starting point and the ending point also. Start point and ending point. Very important. The, the perineum, we have the uh, whole part of a lady, the whole part. The perineum, so we have the anus and between the anus and the sexual organ we call front part of the perineum. So this whole part from here is called the front part of the perineum, including the sexual organs. And the anus itself, we call a middle part. The middle part. And the anus and the, co anus and the back part between the coccyx, we call the back part, back. The back part of the perineum. Okay? We, ha we have to, this is very important. We're going to do a lot, a lot, a lot of exercise of this. Okay? If you look at 
another another part in the side view this way. In the side view this way. Here is the coccyx. Is that right? And here is the anus. And here is the sexual organ. Here the male sexual organ. So whatever whatever you have. So <laughs> Okay. So between the sexual organ and the anus we call our front part. Front part. The anus itself we call the middle part. The anus and the coccyx we call a back part. Okay? Front, middle, and back. Oh, here. Yeah. Front, middle, and back. Get it? Very important because I tell you, you're going to do so much exercise on the perineum. And I make sure you're gonna fall in love with your anus and your perineum. <laughs> you're gonna do so much, and uh, and uh, until you have to fall in love with it, because all the, the whole thing is that we have to draw the energy from this part. There's so much energy in this area. We have to draw this energy from this part all the way up into the spine, and there's a whole goal that we're doing here. The second point is right in this area. And this is called sacrum pump. In the Taoism, we regarding the sacrum is the most important part. Why? Because this is the the big side and uh, and last part. The sacrum is still in this way, and the sacrum it have a movement by itself. It's very small movement, okay. And it's the how you pump the fluid, the fluid in the brain. So when it comes down, it has to be feed the nutrition to the nervous We have so much nervous system in the spine. And the, nu the nutrition, the white fluid that in the spine is the nutrition carry on. And try to feed the, uh, the, sec uh, uh, the, the, the nervous system. And the pump, when you're breathing and you move, the pump is moving and it pumps the fluid up and down. Otherwise, the fluid go down and don't go up. And we're going to get trouble. Now... The next one is the T11. The T11 means thoracic 11. It's a lot of nerve branches on the back here. So opposite of the solar plexus. How to find the solar plexus? You put your hand on the navel, put your hand on the tip of the sternum. Right on the tip of the sternum, the sharp tip of the sternum, you break in the middle, that is solar plexus. Right opposite the solar plexus is the T11. Or you bend your back down. You, some people may have one bone stick out longer, but two out more than the other people. That is the T11, or we call it a thoracic 11. If you don't have it, don't worry, okay? You can find another way by grabbing your last floating ribs. Your last floating rib. When you follow the last floating rib to the back, that is the T12, mean thoracic 12. From thoracic 12 come out one inch is T11, thoracic 11. T11 opposite the adrenaline gland. So the T11 is the adrenaline gland center. The adrenaline gland is very interesting. That in, in a Taoism, in the way I, I, I studied the Taoism, I like the way the Taoism proportionally, slowly, and strengthening, not drain out the adrenaline gland. The next one is C7. C7, when you bend your back, bend your head down, you feel one big bone stick out. One big bone stick out. Very big bone, right on the base of your shoulder. Now, from there, we come up to the base of the skull. Right on the top here. When if right between here, if you bend your back, head back this way, you feel a hole there, right in here. Okay? The crowd point, Apparently, it's involved with a pineal gland point. It's right on here. It's about three inches from the brain down. 
if you draw a line from the nose straight up and the ear up and right in the middle here, you're going to see few a point. Apparently, it's this point. If you see the crack here, it's about this point. Okay? About this point. And that is called a crowd point. If you drill a hole right from here down about three inches, you're going to meet a pineal gland point. And now you come down to the solar plexus, right in the between in the other organ, right in here. The solar plexus. Okay? The navel is right on this point. 